Hey guys, welcome to another video and yet again we are talking about a custom ROM for the Redmi K20 Pro. Now, with time, custom ROMs for this particular device have been getting really, really good and uh, it's about time we check out Project Arcana. That's what we are doing in today's video. I've been using it since yesterday. We have the complete review ready for you guys. So please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon because it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us to make amazing content like this. If you think you like chatting with like-minded people, join us on Telegram. We have close to 2,000 people over there. You can follow us on Instagram Twitter and Facebook and last but not the least if you think the hard work is worth the effort please click on the join button and support the channel now without further ado hello awesome people welcome to phone ops my name is Kalash let's get going Now before we begin, a gentle reminder, this right here is one of the skins that we are designing for many many smartphones. It does also have a case which we will be coming up with soon. This is one of our cases as well and we do have a very very good giveaway coming as well for all of our cases for K20 Pro, Poco X3 Pro, Mi 11X, iPhone 12. These things are in the works, they will be coming very very soon. I know you guys have been waiting patiently, so keep waiting. Very soon an announcement will be made regarding the same. Now what do we have here? We have Projector Kana AOSPS UDFPS OSS, that is version 4.0. This is an unofficial version that we are talking about. This is of course based on Android 12 initial release on the 8th of February 2022. We are shooting this on the 11th of February 2022. Now, as you can see over here, this comes for Android 11 firmware, which is recommended. Always make a backup be safe based on OSS vendor and custom perf kernel. I noticed that in the performance and I'll share the numbers with you. Now, if you don't flash this ROM from the recoveries above, you will end up in fast boot. So only use the recoveries shared in this post. Orange Fox is recommended though, right? Now, if we go to the screenshot section or the support group section, we don't really have a change log over here. So let's go back to the main screen. Now you will notice a theme over here. They are clearly targeting OnePlus's Oxygen OS. It says never forget. Now that is a good thing for a couple of reasons. Not only a lot of people like OnePlus's Oxygen OS, but as you know, Oxygen OS has merged with Color OS and sort of lost its traction. And if we are gonna have a custom ROM which is going to follow the theme or you know the performance orientation of Oxygen OS, that's going to be good, right? So that's a good uh, you know step in the right direction. So if you go to settings over here, you will see that it actually looks a little different from Oxygen OS, but it looks quite like it as well. So you have this segmented settings menu over here, which we will talk about in a bit. Let's go to about and let's actually go to the Android version. That is Android version 12. Now, once again, what you see over here, this is typical Oxygen OS look with that they are going for, which is really, really nice. So this is the version Dream 4.0 for a device or a file. Release type is the Community Edition Magus Alchemist. I don't know what that means, but you do have your Android 12 Easter egg, which is present and it works absolutely fine. As you can see over here, the animations are a little fast compared to other custom ROMs, you know, like they are not relaxed and stuff like that. Now, apart from this, it does come with a January security update. I would have loved for it to come with the Feb security patch, but soon we should have that as well. This come, comes with the custom perf kernel Android version 12, and this is the build number. Now, when you boot into this particular ROM on the home screen to the left, of course, you should have Google feed, which I don't see over here, but you do have a bunch of icons over here. You do have your standard Android 12 menu, and you will see, as I said, you know, the animations are a little on the faster side for my liking. I'm not saying that is a bad thing by any means. All I'm trying to say over here is these fast animations doesn't really make your phone feel that smooth or that, you know, fluid and stuff like that, but that's okay. It's, it's a choice thing, leave it or love it, whatever you want to do. Now, apart from this, you do have very, very few icons over here, very, very few applications, completely deep bloated. It does come with a very, very basic uh, camera application. And I did install Gcam and few things are working. So the Gcam video for this device is coming soon in the next week as well. We should have completed uh, our testing by then. So, you know, no bloatware over here and uh, absolutely fast and fluid what the interface is. If you press an hold over here, you will have home settings, which gives you access to this custom launcher. I don't know what that is, but I would like to see why I don't have the option of Google feed. Let's see here. So probably because I don't have Google installed. So let's quickly go ahead and install Google and see if that works. 
So let's go ahead and install it real quick. We do have a decent Wi-Fi connection, so it should not take a long time. Right, so once you've installed the Google app to the left, you will have your Google feed, which is smooth as butter. It works absolutely fine, right? So no problem with the Google feed at all. In fact, it is very, very smooth. Now you will go to Google Photos in which you will notice that you do have unlimited Google storage available and no, I have not got any of my accounts banned and I did share that update on the channel because I wanted everyone to be careful, right? So no issues whatsoever over there. Now, if you look at this particular settings menu, you will see that it is smooth and it is sort of different as far as the segmentation is concerned. Even the app icon customization or, you know, the app animation menu is pretty good. You do have something called as Tresden's Liar, which is a customization menu. It does allow you to, you know, customize across status bar, quick settings panel, navigation, lock screen and system under which you have battery settings, carrier label. Now, do remember that I have visited all these settings personally. I have changed whatever I can. That is the reason you can see that the Wi-Fi icon is like this, the signal icon is like this. I did play around with the battery bar at the top and the traffic indicator, all the other things. If you go to the quick settings menu of this particular ROM over here, you do have a bunch of options, including reboot and all the other options, caffeine and things like that are present. So it is a ROM which does have quite a substantial amount of customization available, but it is not over the top. It is not something that is extreme. And there are some things that could have been added, but they're not there right now. But trust me, it does do a very, very balanced job as far as a custom ROM with customization is concerned. Now you do have the Arcana game space over here, which does give you a ton of options. And that is always a good thing because a dedicated gaming menu always helps. Now, Moving on to the other options, you do have wallpaper and style in which you do have dark theme option. You do have themed icons. You can actually go ahead and choose different wallpapers, but you just have one over here. And say you choose this one, you will get something like curated culture. So let's go ahead and see if we have Monet UI in action or not. Let's see here, there you go. So themed icons, Monet UI doing a splendid job there. No problem whatsoever. Under battery, you do have thermal profiles, but it doesn't give you access to the 180 Hz touch sampling rate. Now it does say the battery level is low. You do have the Arcana Idle Manager over here. If you move on to the display settings, you will see that now in the settings menu, the Monet UI is taking action. The greenish shade is what you can see, which is a good thing, right? Now the colors can be adjusted. Tap to wake is present. Always on display is present. Now a very, very important factor over here is the fingerprint scanner. So let's see how it works. Now I will be very, very honest. The fingerprint scanner on this has not been very, very fast and accurate for me. So that for me is a sort of a letdown because the ROM overall is really, really nice. Even after enrolling two to three different fingers, Sometimes, you know, even on the highest brightness, it is having difficulties recognizing my finger, as you can see. And yeah, I have to use this. So, you know, if I take you to security and say you go to fingerprint. Okay, let's go ahead and add one more fingerprint over here real quick and see what difference, if any, does it make. All right. So we have two fingers of the same thumb added now. So let's go ahead and try this now. Okay. There you go. Now it works. So initially it was an issue, but after I added a finger twice, it was working fine. So no problem whatsoever there. You do have your front camera settings over here. You do have your gestures. And if you see, you do have your, you know, three finger screenshot as well. So those things are present. Things like Play Store certification is present and that works absolutely fine. So you will not have any problem there. As you can see, you also have wide wine L1 certification. So you can consume your content in HD. Now the charging speeds on this has been a little off for me. They have been around 20 to 25 watts in between, but not exactly accurate. 
But if we talk about the battery life over here, as you can see, we were at around 60% battery in, you know, one day and three hours. And we've used the phone for around one hour and 30 minutes and we are still at 15% battery. So the battery backup on this ROM is pretty rock solid. The charging speed is a little slow compared to the 27 watts that you get on most custom ROMs, but it is manageable. You know, it would take around half, one and a half hour to one hour, 45 minutes to charge the device completely. And considering all the options that the device has to offer, this is a, you know, reasonable experience is what I would share. So yes, you can use Gcam, you have Play Store certification, banking apps and uh, Amazon Prime HD and stuff can be played on. So everything is good. But what about the benchmark numbers? So if we go to Google Photos over here, Let's talk about the CPU throttle test first. Now, this is an excellent score for a custom perf kernel is what I would say. Average score of 209.902 GIPS with a CPU throttling of 87% and the highest score of 236.62 GIPS. That is beating the Poco X3 Pro and that is an excellent score over here. Even if we go to Antutu to benchmark, the story does continue, but not in a very, very good way because we have a mediocre score, an average score that you get on the K20 Pro that is 537,874. Now moving on, if you actually go to Geekbench over here, you will see that the good story of high benchmark numbers continues because you do get 743 and 2768, you know, around 7 points less in the single core score. Anything above 750 is extremely good for gaming, but even this will not disappoint you. So all in all, Project Arcana for me comes as a complete package, even though unofficial, most of the things, I would say 95% of the things on this ROM are splendid. If you like OnePlus OS, this is something that you should try. You know, you should put in your efforts to go ahead and use this or install this probably. Let me know in the comment section, what do you think about this video? Until the next one, this is Kailash signing off at PhoneOps. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.